One of the commenters out in Hater Nation made a mention of Freshly. Kiwi Farms later found some screenshots that showed the Freshly meals. Gosh, they look an awful lot like what Amber ate in her last vlog. Anyway, here's the January 26th vlog, which is special because she premiered it. This means that, at least during the first run-through, no one was able to skip through the video to the weigh-in. No, it was not a live feed. She premiered a pre-filmed video. Pre-filmed video with a carefully edited pseudo-weigh-in. She found a way to force her viewers to sit through every ad and every excuse and every little tear she squeezed out of her face. And she had a chat running for those Pollyannas willing to throw money at her. And the premiere started at least six hours before the pre-filmed video actually rolled. That's a lot of money and a lot of attention. I won't be surprised if she does this again. As for the pre-filmed video itself, not alive, she premiered pre-filmed video. It was about 24 minutes long. There was a lot of talking and a lot of crying. Actual tears visible on her face even as she is apologizing for crying on video and how she promised she wouldn't cry on video. She complains about people talking about her skin, her face, how she looks pasty. At least she says it's because she is obese and not because she has some super pale genetic heritage. She's tired because she stayed up for 22 hours at this point. Apparently trying to stay up for many, many, many hours is the way to uh, fix your sleep schedule. There's no such thing as a sleep debt that will just magically get you back on track. She did not want to film this video because she's not yet at her goal weight. She wanted to wait until she was 499. She has seen the cycle diagram. Amberlynn Phase 1 has entered the chat, her exact quote. She complains about people using that diagram to predict her actions. She conveniently ignores how those people are usually right and how this diagram came about through years of observing her. She says that this is her journey, that that cycle, that diagram getting passed around is actually proof of her being bipolar and having a food addiction and so many other things that she just refuses to get treatment for. She says again that she has low self-esteem. And again, I'm remembering other members of Hater Nation, the funny ones, the ones who do comic edits, they've actually made edits that put together all of her little kissy faces, how she basically makes love to herself through her, the viewfinder. And then she rants again about how no one believes her, how her viewers make her feel that the weight loss is not worth it, how she has to tell herself that she's losing weight for herself and not for the viewers, but her viewers make it so hard for her to remember that. So it's really her viewers' fault that she has a weight problem, because the viewers make her feel like it's not worth it. How very convenient. She claims she isn't binging anymore, or at least she doesn't call it a binge. Now she just calls it overeating. That the calorie counts from these overeating episodes is now much lower than it used to be. It seems that she's cured herself of binging, that people bringing up her cycle is hurtful because it's not entertainment for her. It's proof of her being bipolar and food addict and her mentals. She's saying she, she's basically saying that she has no choice in how she behaves so that the viewer should stop pointing out her bad behavior. She apparently thinks she has no choice in whether or not she gets actual therapy, that she doesn't just look for a therapist who will simply let her cry. It's like some part of her brain has not yet figured out that therapy is work. It is hard. It is not just about crying and having somebody say there, there, there. It's about getting past what happened so that you can actually have a better life afterwards so you don't keep repeating patterns that you know hurt you. She's claiming that that cycle is not entertainment for her, that it's hurtful for her, but she refuses to get help to get out. And that's, that's where the frust, again, that is where the frustration comes from with her. She has so much money and so much time and she is not using her resources in a way that will actually propel her forward in life. She is content to stay in her little rut where she eats for money and she takes that money and buys more food to eat for money 
and goes shopaholic on Torrid and trips to Walmart and restaurants. It's food and shopping. That is her life. That is the life she has chosen. And given that she's refusing to leave that life in spite of having the resources, it seems that she's happy in her rut. So why does she keep playing the victim here and wanting us all to cry for her and tell her poor you when all of her actions to this point show that she's happy in the life she has chosen. If she was truly upset about eating herself to death, she would get help. She would not say, as she did in her last vlog, that she does not need support. In her last vlog, she said she does not need support. She can do this for her, and we just haven't really seen much doing it for her. She's been saying for years now that she knows what works for her, and apparently... Apparently what works for her is being at her current weight and having a life that revolves around food and shopping. So okay, just admit it. Just admit it. In one of her Instagrams or Snapchats, she said she started losing weight on October 8th. I still have those vlogs back from my own extremely stupid attempt at doing a parallel weight loss journey. We were both, le we are, both lesbians who have very long hair, wear glasses, or at least she used to wear glasses, want to be writers, and need to lose weight. I was a complete idiot Pollyanna. But anyway, the October 8th vlog is where she and Becky... Becky was apparently not eating egg yolks at the time, and they'd used a water bottle to separate the yolk from the white. One of the yolks broke. Amber famously said that a little bit of egg yolk wouldn't hurt Becky. Back to this video. Some people, mostly on Kiwi Farms, think that maybe they heard something scraping off the scale. So I guess I'll try to figure that out. And it's interesting how the clip both ends before the scale returns to zero, and also the clip doesn't start with the scale being turned on. The scale is already turned on. So there is a question of whether or not she teared the scale. I'm gonna put that clip in right here. Okay, so I'm stepping on naked. <laughs> Five nineteen point six. So five. I'm gonna put that clip in right here. It is so I'm stepping on naked. <laughs> five nineteen point six. So, five... Okay, here we are with another Ms. Reed summary. January 29th is what we're summarizing today. It's 28 minutes long. She begins by saying thank you for the support. Positive things said to her help her lose weight. Negativity makes her binge. Almost as if she's trying to subtly tell her viewers that any weight gain is actually the viewer's fault and not her own. She does admit specifically that she premiered her last big weigh-in video because... Very specifically, she did not want anybody to be able to just skip to the way and she wanted people to listen to her. She does do a full body shot in this video, sort of. Her black stretch pants in front of the black freezer means her legs are not really visible. I would like to point in that she could do weigh-ins that way in the kitchen, 
use the talking scale so we don't have to see the screen, you know, because it talks. Set her phone up the way she did for her body shot. And then go walk out, step on the scale, have it talk to us. And then she can just rub it all in the hitter's faces. But, mmm, she doesn't do that here. She doesn't seem to be interested in doing that here. But it would allow her to do a weigh-in without anyone helping her. Brief shot in the car after her, uh therapy visit. She's now claiming ADD, another diagnosis for the collection. She mentions once again that she is still trying to get her sleeping schedule on track. Her psychiatrist wants to put her on anxiety medication. Thinks that, you know, her great crippling anxiety is what's keeping her up at night, but Amber doesn't want to be on anxiety meds, at least not yet. Misery does finally admit she's using Freshly. She claims she hid it because she was afraid of backlash or something, and that viewers should notice that back in her What She Ate in a Day video, she never specifically said that she cooked it. She just said that, you know, if you don't like cauliflower mash, add a potato, as if she'd cooked it. Now she is shilling Freshly, basically. Provides a link to it in her video. She's been doing it since the beginning of January. She eats a little bit on camera, reveals that she has a new weight loss Instagram, pineapple pinup. She also says that she was talking to a quote-unquote close friend about doing her own cooking and that maybe Amber should do that again. You know, Freshly was working. She was losing weight, therefore she's going to quit it. What's interesting is around 12-minute mark, she talks about how she has to get out of the house and that Freshly let her not leave the house. And I'm thinking, wait, is she saying that getting food is the only reason she leaves the house? Wow. She wants to be transparent on her weight loss, even though, her own words here, even though this is not a weight loss channel, she still wants to be transparent about her weight loss because that is part of her life. And that lately she's just been crying sometimes when she wants to eat instead of, Trying to stay, she's trying to stay away from using food to numb her feelings. She's finding it hard to distract herself from all the food because she would often eat while doing the very things that she's using to try to distract herself, such as, you know, watching shows. She does do her coloring. She says she walked for 10 minutes and that her heart got up to 141 beats per minute. She did not show any of this. She did not show the walking. She just cut out and then cut back in with her breathing hard. She openly wonders if anybody would be interested in little daily weigh-ins until she hits 499. She kind of wants to, but doesn't know if anyone would be interested. This is called baiting. And to send a message on her Instagram. She ends her video with saying that she feels satisfied when people think she's lying about her weight, her weight loss, and her activity levels. She likes it when people think she's lying. Well, that's a new one. And that's January 29th. Uh Freshly it was great for, you know, the last few weeks. It helped me a lot. Kickstarted a path to knowing like portion sizes because sometimes I can be really off with that. A big thing is like canceling Freshly. I'll be able to have an excuse to leave the house. I have to go to the store. I have to pick out my own food and really decide what I want to eat, what I want in my diet plan, what I want in my health journey instead of relying on a food service. But like I said, I do recommend it. I just, don't you guys think that it would be better for me to choose my own foods and like actually get out of the house and like have to go do that for myself? It gives me satisfaction that people think I'm lying about my way in and that people think I'm lying about being able to walk for 10 minutes.